all my children a chance encounter. Something interesting? Uh, not really. What is it? Drives Cliff and Nina further apart. And on the edge of night. I thought you might end up hating yourself in the morning. Let's just drop the subject. You've never had a night like last night with little Judy, have you? All my children, the edge of night. Weekdays. Mother, I'm leaving Harold. I'm going to the basement. The basement? It's Filene's famous $60 suit sale. New spring suits from big names. Only $60. All kinds. Wools, even silks. Only $60. I could pay twice this anywhere else. $60 suits? I'm off to the basement. Filene's Basement of Boston. Sale starts Monday, 8.30. The People's Court today at 4.30. You want to know what it's like? It's like walking through a fog and seeing it clear away in bits and pieces until all of a sudden you start to see a little light ahead of you. That's what I'm seeing now, a little light. Uh, see the lights of the television studio. Well, it was very dark in the studio that night, and plus you were in no condition to see much of it. I also remember deciding to go there. It was at that bar, the Cornerstone, after Jody called. Yes, but we know you were at the studio. I've already admitted that to the police. You're not telling me anything no. new. I remember more now. I remember the look on Nora's face, for example. A very triumphant, gloating look as she told me why she was there. This confession she was going to make for the television cameras. $25,000 for two minutes. That's a high-priced performance. All right, all right. So you got angry with her and you went to try and throw her out, but you were too drunk, so you fell and you hit your head. Too angry to let her go through with it, too drunk to stop it. Miles, please stop torturing yourself. Now, this is all over and done with. I've talked to the police. They have everything down on paper. No, they don't. There's more. I didn't tell the police what happened after I quarreled with Nora. Oh. What are you doing here? I came to see you home. Is that useful I am? Have you seen Nora? Oh, my God. Oh, my God in heaven. Listen to me. We have to get out of here. We have to get out of here right now. You can do it. Come on, please. Help me. Come on. You can do it. Please. Let's go. That's what really happened, isn't it? Nora was dead when you got there. That's the truth, isn't it? No, it's not. You've just been dreaming. You've been reconstructing this whole night in your imagination. It's not my imagination. I remember this. The two of us, Nora and I, on the studio floor together, except she was dead and you hadn't even gotten there yet. Which means I'm the one who killed her. It was me. And all the lies that you've been telling have been for me. And all the blame that you've taken, it's mine to take. Edge of Night is brought to you by Mild Ivory Liquid. It helps hands stay young looking. And by April Fresh Downy, America's favorite fabric softener. It's going to be a tough match, Mom. Oh, not if we play like we did last week. Wish my tennis dress felt more comfortable. It was softer before. Mine, too. Sure, you didn't use Downy this time. There's a big difference without the softener. And where's that nice, fresh smell? I just washed it. 
You didn't rinse in Downy's April Fresh smell. Only Downy gives you April Freshness combined with skin-loving softness. Makes static cling almost disappear. We'll get them today, Mom. It feels soft again. She noticed. Mmm, and everything smells nice, too. Aren't you glad Downy's back on your side? April Fresh Downy, a noticeable improvement. <laughs> She's 25, so she. <laughs> One of these hikers isn't 25, but 37. She's Michael Pfeffer, mother of two. They both look young. But what about their hands? They look young, too. Looking young is no accident. I take care of myself, especially when I do dishes. That's why I use ivory liquid. The name Ivory has always meant mildness to me, so I know it'll treat my hands gently. These mild suds help my hands stay young looking, even with lots of dishes. Take another look. Who's 37? <laughs> I'm 37. You sure look young. Well, hiking helps. What helps your hands? Ivory liquid. My hands need that mildness. Mild ivory liquid helps hands look young. The worst thing that could happen is that they'll accuse you of being an espionage agent, but you know they're going to have to prove that. Oh, well, that shouldn't be too hard. I mean, come on, honey, you were there. You were hiding in the bathroom when my car and Cameron found that incriminating evidence in my wall safe. So is their word against yours. Oh, yeah. Well, of course. Who's going to believe them? I mean, my car is only district attorney, and Cameron's only the second in charge of the Central Intelligence Agency. I mean, who's going to believe them? But you were framed. We'll have to tell him that. He framed you. you know, I've got no proof of that. Well, then we'll have to tell him the whole story. Who he is and what he wants. Oh, come on, Raven. They're never going to let me let their precious story of the phone book out in public. And that's what we'll do. We'll tell them that we're going to tell everybody about the phone book if they try to prosecute you. Oh, Raven, you're so naive. Why? Why can't we do that? Come on, they blackmailed us. We can blackmail them. They'd never take the risk of me telling that story in public. I'm sure that they'd insist on closed testimony. Well, if you have a good lawyer... I've got the best lawyers. I just don't have any proof. <sighs> what worries me is that they'll involve you and that they'll charge you with being a, an accessory. Oh, that stupid Ian, I could just kill him. It's all his fault if you hadn't put that thing in your safe. And all this time you've been saying he's your best friend. Well, we don't have any proof. I mean, while he's off in the Caribbean, we may never see him again. You think so? Well, I, when he finds out I've been arrested, he'll probably take off for a couple of years. Uh-uh, no, no, no. I think Ian's gonna go wherever that phone book is. Sweetheart, why don't you give me the telephone, sweetheart? I'll call Spencer and tell him to get my attorney's crack down. Thank you. The telephone's probably bugged by now. Don't say anything stupid. You mean like uh, having joined the KGB? <laughs> uh, Spencer's gonna have a heart attack when he finds out about this. It's funny he's not answering the phone. Where the hell could he be? I didn't mean to get you out of bed, Camilla. No, that's all right. I was just um, reading. I'm sorry for being so unreasonable earlier when I threw you out. I've realized that I have to talk to you. In fact, you're the only person I can talk to. Well, I'm flattered, I think. Uh, do you mind if I have a drink? Of course not. Do you think you really need one? You're right. I, I feel like I've been drinking all night, but I haven't. Sometimes just your thoughts can make you dizzy. What have you been thinking about? Oh, about my, my life for the past two years, or should I say the past ten years, about this career of mine, about working for other people. You know, you were right, Camilla. I have been fooling myself into believing that I have what they have just because I live in their shadow. Oh, you have been thinking deep thoughts. But it's true. It's what led me to this type of work in the first place. I was a dirt poor kid from a dirt poor family, but my father lived in a mansion. You see, he was a servant and a driver for a wealthy family. Whenever he let me visit him, my parents were separated. He always acted as if he owned that damn mansion. I guess that's where I got the idea that being a servant would be like being a millionaire. Do you see? Oh, yes, I, I see. I had my first job with a rich family. I was 15. They treated me like dirt, but I just, just made excuses. The next job wasn't as bad. There were, there were a half a dozen servants. There was even a maid that I fit. 
Ah, oh, I'm sorry, Camilla. I shouldn't be boring you with my autobiography. You are not boring me. I just don't understand why you feel the need to justify your life, Spencer. Because you have made me hate what I am. You and Skylar Whitney have made me hate myself. Darling, I'm sorry. I just never realized what went with this job. Contempt. But we felt it. You did, too, when you were married to him. No. But I never planned on Skylar Whitney feeling it. I thought he would be so grateful to me because I'm the one that gave him everything he has now. But oh, no. Oh, no. The minute I went to work for him, back came that old contempt. That's why I have to do it. Are you talking about... The liquidation, the money? Yes, I'm talking about the money. I'm doing everything Sky Whitney ordered me to do. I'm selling everything he owns. I'm turning it into hard cash, but he is taking huge losses, just like I predicted. He just will never know how big those losses really are. Spencer, do you mean... Oh, good Lord. It's very pretty, isn't it? Something very aesthetic about a lot of money. And you're not going to return this to me... Mr. Whitney? There is no way possible that he can know it's gone, Camilla. Spencer, you're wonderful. You Hello? got... Who is that? You uh, told me your brother was in uh, Caribbean. Uh, good evening. Uh, or should I say good morning? Hello, Mr. Wiley. Camilla, you should have told me you have company. Yeah, you should have told me too, Camilla. I would have dressed for the occasion. Spencer, you know how this house frightens me when I'm alone. I ask Gavin to stay over. Sort of a night watchman. I see. Well, excuse me for uh, barging in. I, I should be leaving. No, Spencer! Why don't you stay and have a cup of coffee or something? What? Sounds very, very cozy, Camilla. But I, uh, I really have to leave. Well, what was that all about? Oh, you know Spencer. No, I don't know Spencer at all. But um, judging from his reaction, I think you know him very well. We all have our pasts. Spencer happens to be part of mine. I see. Well, he worked for my late husband, you know. That wasn't all of it, was it? I don't think you should be concerned about Spencer. And I won't be concerned about Jody Travis. I only want wheat and fine glass to touch my lips. The crystal clarity and feel of the finest handmade crystal. Perfectly smooth, thin lips, even the sound of quality. Wheaton Fine Glass has achieved a breakthrough in glassmaking technology, producing drinkware with the look and features of the expensive European imports, but with an affordable American-made price. I only want Wheaton Fine Glass to touch my lips until dessert. Diane Brock, don't treat your puppy like a dog. Hey, Steve Levitt, you're treating your puppy like a dog. Kit Miller, are you treating your puppy like a dog? Oh, no. Dog food is for dogs. My puppy gets puppy food. Puppy Chow brand puppy food. I know puppies need more nutrition, and Purina Puppy Chow has it. Good for you, Kit Miller. No, good for him. Don't treat your puppy like a dog, dog, dog. Give him puppy chow. In both regular and beef flavors. You tell me. Huh? Why didn't we talk about it? Huh? Because it's not the kind of thing yeah, to talk about. Yeah, we're going to talk about it right now. You understand me? I'm your friend, all right? We talk as friends. It's hard to talk about. Yeah, I'm sure something about Nor was after your brother-in-law or something? Um, yeah, in a way, she, she was. Nora was out to hurt a lot of people. Well, maybe she deserved what she got. Here you go. Here. Well, I don't know if anyone deserves to be murdered. Some people do. I know a lot of people I'd like to strangle. Sorry, you know. That's all right. Listen, baby, I had you figured all wrong. I really mean that. I mean, I thought you were like this really rich, spoiled kid, you know? Didn't have a worry in the world. 
But if, um, if you ever need to talk to somebody about your troubles, you know, just remember I'm the man with the plan, you know? And there's nobody better in this world to talk to than the preacher. You understand? Uh huh? One little spot of greasy dirt? Most cleaners full strength could handle it. But imagine doing this whole kitchen floor straight from the bottle. I can't. For this, I clean by the bucket. It's top job. No leading liquid in a bucket tops top job on the toughest greasy dirt. It's true. Now take pine oils. They're okay full strength. But pour them in water like I do and watch. Top job cleans the toughest greasy dirt better. Fact is, oil and water don't mix like Top Job. Yet tough as it is, Top Job's still safe on no wax floors. Look, if your greasy dirt doesn't stop at just one spot, switch to Top Job. It cleans better by the bucket. How far does a mom have to go to get wedding kids clean? All the way! Dressing for a wedding day. But don't expect they'll stay that way. There's an usher sitting on her supper. Saw some babies bib and tucker. Extracts and wedding kids need extracts and dye. Just look at this wedding scene. I ask you, will they ever get clean? Go ahead and drop them. Splash them. Mash them. Claim your spot. Tide gets it clean. Tide's America's favorite. From sauce to punch, Tide'll tuck clean it. You've just seen it. Now here's your future grooms and brides. Same clothes, same kids. Now Sunday clean with Tide. Tide! Claim your spot. Tide gets it clean. And then, after I got you in the car, I went back into the studio because I realized I wasn't sure that Nora was dead yet, so... I went back in, and I forced myself to touch her, but she was already turning cold. There was no heartbeat, no pulse, no breath, nothing. And then? I left. No. Something else, something else happened, you know? Oh, right. I, I started to hear the doorbell ring. I didn't know if I was hallucinating or what. It just kept ringing and ringing. That was Gavin? Yeah, but I didn't know it was him then. I, I didn't know who it was. I just stood there, frozen, until whoever it was or whatever it was had gone away. And then I ran out and got in the car and drove us both home. Not knowing that Gavin was watching? No. That's when the lies all started. Oh, I just couldn't tell the truth, Miles. I thought it was better just to deny that both of us had been at the studio. But the lies caught up with you because of him. Oh, and that damn tape. I had no idea she had made that tape before I got there. I knew it. You did? It's another thing I remember. I remember her starting to make that tape. I remember her double-crossing you. That's why I got up. No. That's why I did what I no, did. No, Miles, please don't say that. Please. It's got to be said, Nicole. I got to my feet, and I put that cable around. No, please neck. don't say that. Excuse me, you I don't, mustn't say that I to don't anyone. remember doing it. But I've got to have. We were the only ones in the studio. The studio was locked, wasn't it? You had to use your key to get in, didn't you? Yes. And there's something else, isn't there? Something you haven't told me. I can see it in your eyes. What is it? Well... It's something I, I heard. You heard I, what? You heard what? Tell me. I heard, I heard Nora choking. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, it was a horrible sound. The most horrible sound I've ever heard. Sound of murder. Oh, God. <laughs> so there's never any doubt at all in your mind. If Nora was being killed right then, you knew I was the one who had to do it. Yet you decided to lie to the police. Decided to save me. Why did you do that? Did you think, did you think the law would be easier on you? Is that it? Tell me. All right, never mind. Never mind. Straighten things out with the law. You've had enough lying.
Jinx. Jinx. I still remember what she told me. When I found out that she wouldn't be with me anymore. You told me not to shut myself away from the world, not to go into hibernation. But I guess that's just what I did. It's all my own fault. I'm the one who made the decision. But I wish you were still here, baby. My life is so lonely without you. Yes. Eric, it's Miles. Miles. Miles, what's happening? Well, there's something I've got to talk to you about, something real important. Oh, Miles, I just got in. It's kind of late and I'm tired. I know. It's late, but I'm afraid I'm not going to get much sleep unless I tell you about this right now. It's about Nora's murder. <laughs> no. No, Miles, please, I can't let you do it. It's got to be done, Nicole. No, please, what difference does it make? Which one of us murdered that horrible woman? It could have been me just as easily as it was you. But it wasn't you. It doesn't matter. Don't you see that? Because if you go to prison, they might as well take me too. Because any place, this penthouse, any place will be a prison to me if you were there. The truth is still the truth, Nicole. Well, just think of this. I'd have a much better chance in a court of law, a much better chance. The juries are always more lenient with what women. They argument always is that? Are, but it's true, and you know it's true. Plus the fact if you confess to murder, no matter what happens, whether you go to prison or not, you'll be ruined. Your medical practice, everything, it means so much to you. You know it's everything to you. You're everything to me. You stand so much more to lose than I do, Miles. Can't you see that? Don't say anything to anyone, please. Not a word to anyone. Gorton's gives you two ways to say... Hello, Crunchy. Goodbye, Soggy. Hello, Crunchy. Goodbye, Soggy. That's right. Gorton's brings you two great kinds of fish sticks and fillets. Crunchy with toasted breadcrumbs and potato crisp with real potato crust. Outside, they're never soggy. And inside, there's mild, flaky white fish. One taste and you'll say... Hello, Crunchy. Goodbye, Soggy. Trust the Gorton's fishermen. You can brighten up your night with the music of Nestle Crunch. Creamy milk chocolate is the melody. Crispy crunchies are the harmony. The two together are nearly too much. Let home of you by the Nestle Crunch. Little snack and appetite and toe tap and tantalize and brighten up with music. Nestle Crunch's music to your Hope. Do you want to talk about today? Or do you just want to keep talking about the past seven years? Ryan's Hope. Weekdays. Uh, Preacher, I have to go home oh, now. Oh, come on now. We were just starting to talk and it was nice. I know, but I don't want my family to worry about me. I wonder if they know how much you worry about I'm them. I'm sure they do. Yeah? You like them a lot, right? Yeah, I like them a lot. Well, you're lucky to have them. I guess that's why I'm afraid of losing them. Well, I know where you're coming from, all right? But let me tell you something. You're young, and you got your whole life ahead of you, and you got to have fun. And you got to get everything you can while you're young. And if you really want something bad enough, you got to ask for it. And if you don't get it, you got to ask for it again. And if you still don't get it, you got to take it. Because when you get old, babe, you're going to have all kinds of problems. Well, that's great, preacher, but I have to leave. I know I can make you feel better. I mean, a lot of girls say I make them feel better when they got yeah, trouble. Well, I'm not a lot of girls. Well, I didn't mean it like that. You know, you're different. No kidding, I really... You know. Different? Yeah? Different than Nora Fulton? Oh, come on, give me a break. There's no comparison. Well, what about Nora? Did Nora ever come up here? For what? She never came up here, and neither did her friend. Her friend? Who's her friend? Oh, you mean Barbara. Barbara Montgomery, right? What'd you say her name was? Barbara Montgomery. 
Uh, Barbara used to work for for my brother-in-law. She was his nurse, and mm. she was beaten up pretty badly, so badly that she's in a coma right now. That's too bad, you know that? Maybe you're right. Why don't you take a hike, huh? It's getting late. What happened? I guess we were cut off. I'm sorry. Oh. All right. Well, look, like, like I was saying, I just got home and I'm kind of tired. You didn't want to see me tonight, did you? Well, all right. It can be in the morning if it's the first thing. Must be important, huh? Yeah, it is. See, you guys made a big mistake about the Nora Fulton case. You got the wrong killer. The right one will be in your office tomorrow. hairspray really holds your hair in style. Enriched with precious mink oil, it holds hair beautifully and gives it the silky feeling of mink. How could you give your hair anything less? Mink Difference Hairspray. Hey, Kibler, how's the old elephant magic? Oh, pretty good. Ah, the old fudge on one side trick, huh? Wow, stripes! Yes, sir, we're making our fudge stripe cookies. We take crisp shortbread cookies, Cover them with rich fudge on one side and fudge stripes on the other side. Unbelievable! I always wanted to know how you elves got the stripes on your fudge stripe cookies, and I still don't know. Keebler fudge stripes, fudge sticks, and deluxe grams. Tonight, meet a woman who made herself an overnight millionaires, a man who built his own island and the world's fastest roller skater on That's Incredible. Then a girl's school becomes a place of horror as a killer picks off the students one by one in Deadly Lessons, the ABC Monday Night Movie. Tonight on ABC's World News Tonight, the Dream Machines. Detroit is rolling out a new wave of computerized high-tech supercars. Lower antenna. A space-age glimpse down the road and into your automotive future. ABC News, uniquely qualified to bring you the world. Are you stuck in a junk food run? Plump, delicious California proof. Star special, zoo expert Joan Embry's amazing animal facts, all waiting for you in this week's Star. New York discovers the darker side of stardom when Jodie Foster tells Entertainment Tonight how her unwanted role in the Hinkley affair changed her life. You do become uh, very realistic about death. Then Tim Conway returns to the tube as a wacky private eye. Peter Gunn with uh, a, a goof walking through it. Plus, Dorothy Lyman, TV's only actress with double network billing. On Entertainment Tonight at 7.30 tonight on Channel 7. Monday, meet the man who built his own fantasy island. Try a head spin with the wing walker. And the hitchhiker who can hit up to 70 miles on his own set of wheels. That's incredible. Then, kiss the pretty rich girls. Make them sigh. Hunt them down. <gasps> and say goodbye. Someone's teaching them deadly lessons tonight. Ruffles have that extra something. You know what it is. Riches. Ruffles have that extra something. More taste rich after rich. The ridges don't just make Ruffles prettier than regular potato chips, they make them taste better. They're like flavor curves that give Ruffles potato chips all that extra taste. Ruffles have that extra something. Ruffles are... Ridges. Ridges above the rest. From Frito Lay. If you think beautiful skin is only something you're born with, get wind of Sea Breeze. Beautiful skin can be a breeze with Sea Breeze. The antiseptic invigorates, cleans deep. Beautiful skin can be a breeze with sea breeze. Exactly.
exhilarates, removes oil and dirt so it can't reach. It's a time for children. It's a celebration.